In the ongoing conflict between Ukraine and Russia, the armed forces of Ukraine have reported successful attacks on the invaders in the Bakhmut and Kupiansk Lyman regions. According to Sarit Sherevati, the spokesperson for the Eastern Group of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, 71 invaders were destroyed in Bakhmut region while 28 were eliminated in the Kupiansk Lyman region. The enemy continues to attack in these areas, with 302 shellings and 22 combat clashes reported in the Bakhmut direction alone. The Ukrainian border guards repelled the assault of six groups of Wagnerites in Bakhmut, with battles raging for every house. However, the enemy suffered significant losses due to fire damage, resulting in only 29 invaders being killed and at least 40 wounded. In another success for the Ukrainian military, a Russian Ka-52 Alligator-class helicopter was eliminated on the Eastern Front. The Avenger anti-aircraft missile system, recently provided to Ukraine by the United States, was also demonstrated by the commander of the United Forces, Lieutenant General Serene Ney. The President of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, and the President of Poland, Andrzej Duda, held a meeting to discuss the possibilities of further strengthening the capabilities of the Ukrainian army. During a press conference, the two leaders addressed various topics related to Ukraine's security and its path towards NATO membership. President Duda announced that Poland has already transferred a total of eight MiG-29 aircraft to Ukraine and is preparing to transfer six more fighters to support Ukraine's efforts to defend its sovereignty. He also stated that Poland is trying to secure additional security guarantees for Ukraine at the upcoming NATO summit in Vilnius in July. President Zelensky, in turn, assured the press that the Russian invaders do not control Bakhmut in Donetsk region, but the situation there remains the most difficult on the front. He also reiterated Ukraine's commitment to protecting its independence and not compromising on its path to NATO membership. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg also weighed in on Ukraine's NATO membership aspirations, stating that in order for Ukraine to become a member of the alliance, it must win the war as a sovereign state and successfully transition from Soviet to Western doctrines and standards. NATO is committed to supporting Ukraine in these efforts. The U.S. Department of Defense announced a new package of military aid worth $500 million, with a total value of $2.1 billion. The aid includes weapons, ammunition, and other military equipment to help Ukraine defend its territory and sovereignty. In addition, Ukraine has received a grant of $2.5 billion from the World Bank as part of a planned $9.9 billion aid program from the United States for 2023. The grant will support Ukraine's economic development and social programs. Finally, Poland and Ukraine are working on a new treaty on good neighborliness, friendly relations, and cooperation. This treaty will further strengthen the already strong bilateral ties between the two countries. The next meeting of the contact group on defense of Ukraine will be held at the American Ramston Air Base in Germany, although no specific date has been given. This meeting will focus on Ukraine's defense and security issues and is expected to be attended by representatives from NATO and the United States. Overall, the meeting between the presidents of Ukraine and Poland and the announcements regarding military aid, grants, and bilateral cooperation demonstrate the continued international support for Ukraine's sovereignty and security. Ukrainian fighters successfully shot down an enemy drone equipped with an improvised explosive device in the Bakhmut direction, according to recent reports. 
The drone, which was of Chinese origin and not stitched, had a plastic pipe attached to it that contained a mixture of plastic and metal elements and was equipped with a remote detonator. Luckily, the fighters were able to cut the cable of the detonator with small arms fire while the drone was still in the air, preventing the enemy from detonating it. The enemy had been using the drone during artillery fire while Ukrainian infantry was in position in shelters.